<laughs> Zach Sag and the gang right now in the studio. Tove Low. Hello. Hello, hello. Now, do you just go by Tove? Is that the thing? Mm-hmm. I like that. Oh, you do? Yeah, well, yeah, thanks. yeah. <laughs> because I feel like, do you, like, throughout everybody, does everybody call you Tove Low? Or do you have, like, do you go by your real name sometimes? Well, um, well, Tove is my real name. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Mind blown. Tell me everything. <laughs> Wait, well, it's a Swedish name. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, the name my parents gave me. Uh, so uh, I've always been called that. And the Tovlo used to be my nickname. But now, okay. since it's my artist name, my friends have stopped calling me Tovlo and just call me Tov. Because they're like, I feel like I say the art. Like, you know, some of them still do. And they always get shit about it from other friends. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're not talking about the artist. Like, you're talking about your friend. So, yeah, <laughs> they've stopped saying Tolo now. <laughs> How do your friends, what do your friends think about all this? Because this is a lot. You've, co- you've yeah. come a long way. You've had a hell of a year, dude. It's been a crazy year. It's been, it's kind of unreal. I mean, in many ways. Uh, but, yeah, they, I mean, they're proud. Yeah. And... Some of them was like, I never thought this. I'm like, well, thank you <laughs> so much for your support. <laughs> but I can totally see, like, you know, the few years there when I was just like, you know, hanging out by myself uh, in my studio, writing and producing, yeah. you know, in this little shed that I had, and I was like, this is gonna, this is gonna work. You know, everyone was like, yeah, well, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, really, you've had an incredible like rise i mean you were a songwriter Mm -hmm. you were part of max martin's songwriting team which i need i want to hear about this team in a second because uh, i can only imagine what it's like working with a group of ridiculously eccentric creative individuals we'll get to that in a second (laughs) you've gone from songwriter to star literally i mean for the it way, felt like overnight. Exactly, it was but for you it wasn't, yeah. obviously. How long did it take? And did you know that that was the path? I mean, I was a writer for maybe just a couple of years, um, yeah. like doing well, you know, like getting by on it, which before that was like, you know, it was a, I was, you know, 22, around 22 when it like started to kind of, you know, when the writing started to be like, okay, you're now you're part of this team and I can mm-hmm. start, you know, writing will be your career. And I was like, I love songwriting. It's amazing. But I still, you know, obviously had that little part of me that was like, you know, I also love performing. But I was so set, you know, being in the studio, being kind of behind the scenes. I love that whole situation. And it was, you, you have a lot of freedom. You can travel, do whatever you want. Yeah. You write with cool people. And and it's a lot of fun. There's less, plesh, uh, less pressure than being an artist, I'd say. But I still kind of really wanted to I still had all these songs I was like oh you know I can't give these away they're too yeah. personal they're about me and and I and I was like oh, you know what I'll just release them on my own it will be like my indie career on the side you know I'll do that for fun <laughs> and uh and then you just I don't know I, I release habits you know without a label and then I just got you know called down to like I had no manager I had nothing I was like I don't know how do I do this I so it was crazy and then yeah when wow. we, you know, we did a new video released it and it just poof, you know, took off. It was crazy. What was the line for you when you were writing with a team for ar- other artists? Like, what was the line that was like, this is too personal to share with somebody else? You know, this is mine. I mean, whenever I used kind of my own experience very literally, like if it's, you know, if it's like a scenario that I've been through, like you can write about, you know, emotions and, and things you've been through more openly and like and people can interpret, you know, in a different kind yeah. of way. But when it's like habits and talking body as well, like they're very literal, like here, yeah. you know, <laughs> and I can see it, you know, see the situation in my head and then I can't give it away. Then it's like too, it's too much about me. I try to think about the other person who I'm writing for or with when I'm writing, you know, for others. Is that the true talent of a, a songwriter, not being able to take your own experiences and put them in a song and then give them away? Is the talent putting yourself in their shoes, kind of believing that you are them? I think and so. And then writing as them? Yeah, I think so. And also, like, if you work with them, obviously it's easier. Like, in, if they're in the room with you, yeah. and you can be like, do you like this? Would you say this? Because that's the main thing, where it's like, would you, would you ever say this to someone? Like, can you relate to this? And if they can't, then it's like, well, then you shouldn't sing the song. Of course. And that's usually the the problem. The problem is never really the melody or anything. Like, it's usually getting the lyrics right with the artist, because mm-hmm. that's, you know, where they can relate fully. So, Now, yeah. h- hardest person to write with or for? Oh. You have one? Because that's really, that's talent. I think the hardest one to work with um, was, and I say this with respect, was of Gavin course. DeGraw. Because he is so talented himself. Yes. So I was kind of like, what am I doing here? I don't really <laughs> you know. Because I, I would like come and have an idea and he's like, yeah, that's great. But what about if we did it this way? And he just yeah. sings the shit out of it. And I'm like you know what, let's, let's do your way. And they, that kind of happened with every idea. So after a while, I was like, um, you know, 
I think you could do this on your own, like you. But we, I mean, it was a lot of fun working with him. Like, he's crazy, but it was like, yeah, that was probably like the one where I felt like, you know, a lot of pressure on me to be yeah. like, shit. I, you know, I'm not up to his, you know, obviously his stronger, his thing. You of know? course. So, so that was hard for me. I'm like, you're a dude. I don't really know. I'm like, would you say this? He's like, no. I was like, no. Of course you wouldn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty <laughs> surreal. I mean, Gavin DeGraw is a huge artist, and I'm, you've worked with so many different artists mm-hmm. through working with Max. Obviously, uh, that's incredible. I mean, do you ever realize, like, have you ever taken a second to s- step back from your life and say, wow, these artists trust my words? I mean, I'm yeah. here to write for some of the biggest artists <laughs> in the world. And then, holy crap, I have my own solo career. Do you reflect at all? I mean, I do. I mean, it's crazy to. I mean, I, I remember I used to sing, for example, with Gavin. I used to sing his songs in high school. Yeah. Like, if I knew that I'd be, like, a few years later sitting, like, texting with him, like, yeah, can we do it tomorrow at 12? You know, that's like, what? You know, I would have, to 16-year-old me, that would have been like, shut up. Sweet Chariot <gasps> up. Yeah. was my favorite song. <laughs> yeah. The, the, wait, he does, Gavin DeGraw, uh, uh, just a girl. Do you know that one? Wait, it's another wait, single. Chariot or the, um, I know the, my other favorite was uh, Prison Guard Son. Yeah, uh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I used to listen to his albums with my mom. And I hope, Gavin, if he hears this, he's not offended. <laughs> but me and my mom used to rock out to his albums. We used to listen to them. We, we heard him, PLJ, and we listened together. Mm-hmm. Uh, artists out there that you really admire that you got a chance to work with? Anyone? Um, I mean, I didn't really write with her, but it was like a you know, consulting each other. Um, yeah. Was it Lord for the Hunger Games soundtrack? That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, she is so talented. Like, I don't even, yeah, it's amazing. She just can deliver so much emotion into, like, the simplest things, and I think that's really cool. And she gave me a lot of great feedback on the song that I have on the soundtrack. You know, obviously, yeah. I sent her my demo. She's like, yeah, what if you do this? And I think more like this. And, you know, kind of, she even, it's like, I want your production on this. It sounds great. So it's, like, the only song that I've released that I've produced fully myself, which yeah. is pretty, pretty cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that was really cool. So my dream collaboration is Sia right now. Like that's the, yeah. I how amazing is she? Her. She's so fantastic. Dude, I feel like you guys would kill it together. <laughs> I think so too. I hope so. I, like, if you hear this, Sia. <laughs> Sia, you need to do something. <laughs> Elastic Heart, those performances on the award shows. Oh my God. I mean, oh. meaningful. How she sings live, like I, cr- I just cry my ass out. I can't take it. <laughs> what is it about her performances that, that resonates with you because as a fellow artist? I just think there is like so much pain and desperation and just like like she sings with so much passion like I can't even like chandelier where like she just basically screams out the chorus and it still sounds so good and live it sounds even better like it's like she just you know maybe that's why you know she I don't know why she chooses to not show herself you know and like kind of stand but it could I mean for me I could totally understand because as soon as you see I mean I kind of thrive on the you know energy from the audience Mm -hmm. and like seeing them and you know getting connected but can also be very you know Intimidating, and it's like someone's like looking at you, like, "What are you doing?" Like, yeah, what the fuck? You'll you, be like, you oh. see judgment on their face right exactly. there and then, and that can like, if you're very sensitive to that, I mean, that can totally like kill your whole emotion. Yes. So I can totally understand if you like stand just and you just get into like the mode of the song, like that would really help your performance because she sings live. I just I don't I can't believe it. It's insane. You yeah. are so passionate about <laughs> music, <Yeah. laughs> and it's so unbelievable to see and to witness mm-hmm. and. It, it, it's really beautiful because I feel like people don't think about music the way you think about it or like the way Sia thinks about it or a mm. lot of these artists think about it. What do you think about the music that's out there today? I mean, there is a big mix of amazing emotional things yeah. that I, you know, really love to be inspired by and take in. But there's also, you know, a lot of stuff that's just, you know, kind of put together of factory wise, you know, that it just yes. sounds like, you know, this is this is a hook for, this is a money hook, you know. Yes. But I can't really... I mean, it's hard to judge, too, because I don't, I can say that, but I don't know. Like, nobody knows. People say that about my music as well. Like, you know, oh, she just sings about sex because, you know, it'll get her, it'll make her famous, you know, trying to provoke or whatever. Where it's for me, it's really like, I I love it. It's passion. I think, I, you know, it's fun to me. I think, you know, that really means something to me. Um, and it, how who am I to say that about anyone else's music that I don't like? You know what I mean? Of so course. it's kind of hard to... To know, but I still, you know, that's what I love about, you know, the internet and the way you can just share things. Yes. There's, you know, there's SoundCloud, there's Spotify, there's iTunes, there's everything online where you can just get, you know, you can find any kind of music that you love. And that's amazing. Habits. Mm-hmm. An incredible song. <laughs> Thank you. Truly. You're sitting down to write that song. What's the first thing that pops into your head? What inspires that track? Um, well, I was obviously going through a tough time. Um, but it was just, I think it was, I mean... 
when I started writing it, it was after a very like period of just you know making a mess of things, uh-huh. like having fun, yeah, but also you know really trying to like numb a p- the pain from from this relationship that I was that I'd been through, and it was really kind of just like sitting down and just like what the fuck am I doing? Like yeah. what am I doing? You're like what is this? You know, and kind of laughing at it at the same time because I had to because you just like it's it's too. I don't know if you just see everything very serious all the time when you when you're having a hard time, you, it's harder to get through it. I of think course. that's like the really the right time to use humor and just like laugh about it to be like, you know what, things are shit right now, but it's gonna be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of you know the thought I had in my head when I when I wrote it, and then obviously still wanted to kind of also bring back the the, the pain of things. Like in the chorus, was just very open and honest, you know, like. Here's what I'm doing to keep you out of my head. <laughs> and is that scary for you sometimes to be so open and honest? Yeah, I mean, I don't really realize it when I write the songs because then I'm in a totally different headspace and I kind of just use my life and my experiences. And but obviously, when I released my my album and it was like people be like, "So tell us about this guy," you know, and, or you know, yeah. or the girl if it depends on the <laughs> video. It's like, so, um, so what did you do? What did he do? And I was like, "You can't ask these questions. They're so personal." And I'm like, "Well, it's all there in my music. So obviously, people will want to know. They want to know." Yeah, and I understand that. I think it's, it's it's very a lot easier for me to sing about it than to talk about it. I get all like, "Well, I don't, uh, I don't know what to say." Uh. <laughs> because it really is. I mean, I feel like sometimes yeah. people forget that. That song, mm. that's you. That's an extension of who you are as a human being, yeah. not an artist, a human being. Yeah. I, I, d- does that suck sometimes when that type of shit gets in the way of art? I think, um, yeah, sometimes it's just, I mean, I try not to read a lot, you know, people because people, yeah. you know, start to have a lot of opinions about you, obviously. And I try not to read too much because, I mean, a lot of it is really, really amazing things that like people seem to relate. And, you know, I get so many sweet mails from fans to say that, you know, I can relate to your song. And, you know, I've been through the same. And you kind of like, yeah, you know, you always think you're alone in it, but you never are. Yeah. And um, it's but then also there's a, you know, obviously people say a lot of mean things as well. <laughs> a lot of mean things. <laughs> so I try to like not because. I mean, yeah, I don't want to have to think about that when I write songs. I'm not going to think about, oh, if I say these people are going to get offended or someone's going to think this or what are they going to say about me now? I'm just going to do, do you. what I want to do. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do me. Yes. Well, you can't, like, I, we deal with it in another way. Obviously, mm. when we talk about our lives on the radio, which we're yeah. unbelievably open, you know, I, I, I get scared all the time about yeah. being too honest. You always second guess. And I guess it's our, in our own way. It's a different form of art. But it's still like very, you're very giving so much of yourself. Like, exactly. You're like an open book that people can just like throw things at and, <laughs> and just rip be mean. pages yeah. and just <laughs> slander it. It's really terrible sometimes. Yeah. Has there been a part in this? Because really, this is kind of a new journey for you. Yeah. You've transitioned from solely being behind the scenes to being so in front of the camera. I mean, there's a camera in your face right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, scary a little bit yeah does I mean, that scare is. you to have your art judged to have you judged i mean it's more i think me than because the one thing for me is like i'm i've always been confident with the music of like course. i'm never i'm never uncertain when it comes to the song so that's where i feel the most safe mm-hmm. um like performing and you know but, but it's everything around it like you know the thing people start to care about what i look like and you know what i'm wearing of and, course. and like it's it's their teeth a little weird like there's something going on there like all these things that people just love to comment on of where course. i was like oh i didn't know should i should <laughs> i have my hair another way like has it ever been another way it so, screws with you yeah a little bit. it's weird yeah but it's also and i mean but yeah, I mean, I can't let that get to me. Like, if this no. happened to me when I was seventeen, I probably could not have handled it. But I, I mean, I'm I'm an adult. I'm stronger. I can. I, can, I mean, I know who I am. It's it's. I'm fine with it. <laughs> and I think one of the things that kind of helps someone get through it is knowing that your songs touch and affect so many people all over the world. Yeah. I it mean, makes it worth it. Dude, worth everything. <laughs> Habits is so true, so honest, and really raw in a sense that. I can relate to it. People around me relate to it. Why is it? Why do you think we relate so easily to that that song? Because it just shows the side of a heartbreak or any tough situation where you just kind of like go, you know what? I can't keep it together. Yeah. And everyone has that, but no one, it's very, 
it's not very common for people to stand for that. Like, you'd rather just be like, I'm fine, you know, I don't need him or her, I'm okay, you know, like, I don't need this, I can move on, I'm strong, I don't, you know, it's just, like, nothing touches you. It's like, yeah. it's almost like you're a stronger person because you don't feel anything or whatever. But that's not the case for anybody. So everyone's been there where it's like, I can't handle this, I'm, you know, I I give up, like, I'm, ugh, I'm done, you know, it's just like, I feel really, and I think just maybe that I so openly admit to being, you know, in a fucked up situation, makes people feel like, you know what, then I can be too. It's fine. It's exactly. fine to be, you know, be sad. <laughs> being fucked up is all good. Yeah. <laughs> because you get over being fucked up. Exactly. That's how you get over being fucked up. Get <laughs> fucked up and then get over being fucked up. <laughs> you, you admit to being fucked up, you get fucked up, and then you get over it. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. That works for That's me. That's a new pattern. All psychologists everywhere. <laughs> Pick this shit up. Yeah. Come on, take some notes. When you sit down and you write, right? When mm-hmm. you're going in for a writing session... What do you think about first? Do you clear your mind? Do you come in with things that you want to hit? What is going on creatively with you? I mean, I always, I always write like everywhere. Like yeah. I always have, you know, my 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 book in my pen with me. I'm old fashioned. I write, you know, on a paper, which annoys everyone because like we need the lyrics. I'm like, oh, I just need to find the sheet where I wrote it down, and I can. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Wait, real talk? These are the notes oh, yay. on everything you need? And I was like, literally before you came in, I was like, Heather, sit in that chair and see if she would be able to see my crappy notes. <laughs> I don't want her to be able to see my notes. And then they're like, Oprah has notes. And I'm like, Oprah doesn't have yellow sheet of paper <laughs> handwritten notes. I like that, though. Thank you. Yeah, Thank it's you. good. Um, but no, I kind of always, but it, when it's like, okay, today is the day I'm writing. I usually yeah. have, I pick, you know, one of my ideas that I had, you know, just writing the subway or whatever, where I've just recorded something like, <laughs> into my phone or whatever and I'll listen to it and I'll just like okay I get that and then you know either if you know I get a track from one of the the um, wolf cousin boys yes. the Max Martin team like if they send me a track that I'm falling in love with I'll just like run home and like set up my little studio and just you know kind of okay what does the track tell me <laughs> kind of what emotions does it get out of me and yeah That's, it's so you hmm. do you come in with lyrics first or do you come in with the track first usually? um y- it depends. Like usually if it's my idea from the start, usually I have like a lyric idea and mm-hmm. I set a melody to it. I find the chords that I want and I do like a small kind of production that I send on awesome. to, to my boys. And then and then they kind of like, you know what, we changed the chords here, want to do this. And, you know, they they pretty much, they're very blunt, very honest. They'll be like, this this stuff sucks. This is really bad. <laughs> but this stuff is awesome. And I'll be pissed. And then we're like, you know, divide a little bit. And they'll be like, okay, you're actually right. I love that part too. But let's redo that part. And we'll work together. And it's like an amazing process. And we're so close now. We've yeah. worked together for so long. And we just like really get each other. Like, it's amazing. Collaborative mm-hmm. within Wolf Cousins. Yes. You know, Max's team that you were a major part of. Mm-hmm. Like, how, what is that environment? Are you all working individually? Are you, I, Like, I'm picturing a group of incredibly eccentric, talented people sitting in this zen space on notepads and computers and, like, fancy <laughs> little machines and just doing it. But what is it like? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm picturing the, char- like, the Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory version of songwriting. <laughs> That's oh, definitely that not what amazing. it is. Well, it's kind of, <laughs> it's more like we're sit, we sit in the, like a, a cellar in Stockholm. Okay. Like there's eight guys um, and me. Okay, and that would be like a weird situation if it was <laughs> any other event. Okay. <laughs> that, that would just like, you know. Like, in a cellar. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> eight dudes, one lady, a cellar. Like Sounds what's really going bad. on? <laughs> no, but they, and they all have their own studio, studio yeah. rooms. And it's, you know, there's like a big kind of hangout space. We play FIFA. There's you Very know, video cool. games, tons of coffee, you know, sweets, drink coffee like no one else. And um, like all these, we have these... Um, Two friends of ours, they're, they're brother and sister, who are like always, they're part of the group, they're not musicians, but they're okay. like these two creative, crazy people who make these insane paintings that are everywhere in the studio. That's cool. And uh, it's just a best vibe. There's like red velvet oh. walls and it's very Ooh. cozy. Yeah. I'm sometimes you right now, I'm yeah. getting zen just <laughs> thinking about it. But it's really kind of, everyone just keeps walking in and out of each other's rooms. Mm-hmm. It's like they, you know, sometimes do tracks together and some of them are teams that work a lot together. Mm-hmm. When I'm there, I usually just walk in and like, oh, do you have any fun tracks? And I'm like, oh, I have an idea here. I'll record a little. Yeah. They bring someone else in like, hey, what do you think of this? And it's just like collaborative. It's amazing. Why is it so important to be collaborative in this process? Because there are some artists that they like to kind of hoard everything to themselves. You yeah. know, they don't need another person on it. They don't need another mind to throw things up against. I just think, I mean, besides it being, I think it's always good to get a second opinion because you can get easily get stuck in your own head. Of course. It's more fun to do together. Like, who wants to be alone? <laughs> I agree with you. I just moved out on my own for the first time. And I realized last night, 
holy shit, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> I Keep on. I socialize with people all day. I sit for five hours. I answer the phone. I talk to random strangers. I come to the conclusion. I don't talk to anyone more than I talk to myself and I get lost in my own thoughts and I psych myself out. You need to be throwing <laughs> things at someone. Yes. You need to be talking to someone. Exactly. I, so, uh, <laughs> now, yesterday I realized why people go crazy and why homeless people are insane. Yeah. Because they're by themselves. Yeah. That's they're it. They're alone. They're alone. And you're like, you need, I don't know, if something good happens to you, something bad happens to you, we just want to, you just need someone else to interact with. Yes. Like, you know, you have old ladies with their cats. I mean, that's not the best <laughs> yeah. solution. But you know, it's like I don't know. It's like you need you need someone. I just either now, with pic- animals. <laughs> I now pictured you like writing a song. Yeah. I just pictured you writing a song with a cat, and it was just really that, that was quite the visual. <laughs> I'll be this old crazy lady with blue hair and like tons of cats, and just be like, "What do you think of this?" Like, no, it's not right, is it? No, Wait. no, I'll change it. <laughs> Wait, you need to go because you have a heart out. But uh, seriously, oh, I can yeah, I, I can talk to you for so freaking long. You're a badass. Well, I'll come back. Dude, this is really fun. Please come back. What <laughs> are you sure. What are you looking at for 2015? Um, well, crazy year. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to South by next week and Huge. Uh, yeah, it's going to be so fun. Uh, and uh Europe tour in A- Europe tour in April, a lot of festivals in the summer, US tour in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing okay post vocal rest? Yes. I am healed yeah. and, uh, you know, doctor cleared me so I can sing again. It's never been more fun. Dude, I'm it so sucks, excited. doesn't it? Like, yeah. I, I can't even imagine. It was the worst two months of my life, probably. Um, yeah. You know, in comparison to, but it was, yeah, it was, it was not easy. <laughs> I mean, compared to the year you had that was bomb yeah. ass. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was crazy. You're a badass. Well, thank you. So are you. Tove, <laughs> an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Tove low, everybody. Thank you.